Hey guys, Nate with Charge Cycle Works. Today's product focus is all about torque. So you probably have known the TC500 for about a year now. They were really popular in Europe. They've started coming stateside a little bit more. And the biggest benefit of the TC500 controller, not only is it relatively cheap, it works intelligently with your OEM battery. So all you have to do is install the controller. You don't have to mess with your battery. You don't have to think about bypassing the BMS and it will automatically take your Surin Light B from 5,000 kilowatts up to 7,000 on the 32 amp hour, 34 amp hour, and 40 amp hour batteries. If you happen to have a 38 amp hour battery, it'll take it up to eight and a half kilowatts. That's really impressive for a controller that will intelligently monitor the battery's BMS to give you maximum power without having to do anything else. So out of the box, you're gonna get the controller itself, that controller is actually gonna tuck really neatly and cleanly behind this shield. A harness, some directions to install it, and then of course, a couple stickers to boot. It's a very easy install. It only takes you 30 minutes to take your OEM controller off and put this thing on. You notice that when I did the uh, parts here, you didn't see a display. That's because it intelligently works with your OEM switch you don't have to think about anything else, nothing else to break. You simply install the controller and go ride. All Torp products are gonna work on a 60 volt battery, whether it be OEM or aftermarket, or a 72 volt battery. Here's where things get interesting. Torp says that the TC500 will go up to 13 and a half kilowatts on a 60 volt battery, 17 kilowatts on a 72 volt battery. It can handle 400 current amps on your battery and 500 phase amps um, when you're tuning it in their app. So starting in January 2024, Torp recently introduced the TC1000. This is a brand new controller, very similar stats or specs as the TC500, but everything's just bigger. So for $300 more, it jumps up to 17 kilowatts with an aftermarket battery, which is incredible. Every time we take our bikes up to that much power, I don't wanna say it takes away from the fun because power is fun, but it can easily overpower the chassis if you haven't upgraded everything else on your bike. Point is 17 kilowatts is a lot. If you happen to pair the TC1000 with their new TM25 motor, it's capable of 25 kilowatts with an upgraded battery. That's crazy performance coming out of Torp these days. Now the next products are about to be introduced. Torp is gonna have the TC500 for the Telerius Sting as well. The most impressive thing out of that, if you have an MX4, it'll take your power up to 11 and a half kilowatts on the OEM battery. That's incredible. So the question you might be asking is like, that's a lot of performance out of such a small package, and we agree. So we're gonna start testing everything. We've already installed these on a couple of bikes. We've been running them on our light bees. We're gonna start testing it even heavier more comprehensively to see what the real performance is across all different battery ranges. Both the controller by itself on an OEM battery and the controller and the motor combo. Claimed 25 kilowatts, we're gonna put it to the test. So the TC500 retails for 925 and for about $300 more, the TC1000 retails for 1265. Now we're gonna talk about the Ultra B. I've had this on my bike for a while. You can plug it into your OEM battery, retain OEM controls, and achieve 17 kilowatts. That's pretty impressive for a plug and play system. It'll intelligently monitor the battery performance and give you maximum power without having to open the battery, do some surgery, and bypass it. So what's pretty cool about this is, yes, the controller is small. This is the controller itself. It tucks in pretty neatly behind this heat sink. This heat sink will come in colors in the future. I just happen to configure mine with black. Very clean looking install. Now if you happen to go with our 72 volt, 76 hour upgraded battery, claim stats are 30 kilowatts. Now you're gonna overheat your OEM motor at some point, but that's an incredible performance number out of a pretty small controller. Retail price, of a TC1000 for your Ultra V, 1465. So 
the biggest benefit of going with the TC1000 for your Ultra B is it retains all OEM control. So all the switches that are on your handlebars are fully retained, including the LCD screen readout. So now I want to talk you through our recommended upgrade path. If you're on a budget and you just want to get the TC500 to ride on your OEM 60 volt battery, it's a modest power bump, great performance for the money. If you are a motocross guy, maybe you're thinking about racing or you're a bigger, heavier rider, like let's say 200 pounds plus, go with the TC1000 because as you go through the battery upgrade path, you're probably gonna wanna go 72 volt. This thing can handle 700 phase amps and 700 amps of battery current. You're gonna have more torque and it's just gonna be a better controller for about $300 more. Now, if you start with a controller, the next thing you're likely gonna do is the battery because this is gonna give you more power. If you use more power, your range is gonna suffer. If you upgrade to a 60 volt battery, let's say, uh, or 72 volt. If you upgrade batteries in general, you're gonna have more power and more range. Now, if you get to a point where you're overheating your OEM motor, uh, you're starting to race, again, or you're a bigger, heavier rider, then you're probably a good candidate to upgrade your motor. You might also be a road going guy. If you're like riding wide open all the time, that's gonna create a lot of heat. These motors are capable of 150 degrees Celsius. That's really high. They come in both encoder and hall sensor versions. So make sure to pair it up with the controller that you're gonna run. Of course, Torp wants you to run their controller with their motor. In that case, these are both set up to be encoder. So listen guys, I'm not an electrical engineer, but this is what we do. We test all kinds of products. The most simple way I can describe hall sensor versus an encoder is a hall sensor only has several positions inside the motor. When it hits a certain RPM, it has to switch over to what's called sensorless. So it doesn't exactly know what's going on uh, in the RPM range, so the power might feel a little bit dirty by comparison. It's just not as efficient. Now when you go with an encoder, it has a way of reading the RPMs all the way up through their full range. I think this thing goes up to 11,000 RPMs and it knows exactly what's happening at all times. You can see it all inside the app. So point is, you're only gonna have a choice. If you're gonna go encoder, you have to have an encoder-based uh, controller as well. If you have an older controller, something that might be hall-based, choose that motor instead. Okay, so now our recommended upgrade path for your Ultra B. Get the TC1000 from Torp, put it on your OEM battery, you're gonna get 17 kilowatts. That's a really good power bump for the money. If you watched our prior video, we got 50 miles out of the 72 volt battery. That's incredible range. So the upgrade path is a little tricky for this because not everyone's racing like we are. If you're a trail rider, which is what the Ultra B was really meant for, 17 kilowatts might be more than you need. It could be a perfect power um, for you. If you need more range, then go with a 72 volt battery. Now, for those of us that are racing and pushing our Ultra Bs a little bit too far, the upgrade path is different because as soon as I'm running 17 kilowatts continuous and I'm wide open on a motocross track all the time, I'm gonna overheat my OEM motor. Until Torp comes out with an Ultra B motor, do the controller, do the battery. When they come out with a motor, you may actually go controller, then motor, then battery. Choose the combination that's best for you and your riding style. I know the question comes up all the time. Do I go Torp? Do I go EBMX? Do I go KO? Do I go Sotion? So a little bit of backstory here. Torp actually engineered the motor that is called Sotion now at some point. The specs, very, very similar. The one reason I would say go with Torp is you're gonna have dedicated support. You're gonna have a great warranty you're gonna have a full community of tuning experts. You're gonna have a fantastic app that monitors everything. And you're gonna have a company that fully backs their products, no questions asked. We've only had one small issue with a warranty uh, controller and Torp sent one out the next day to the customer. It's great experience. So in our recommendation, our experience, I would say go Torp over Sotion. It's probably not worth saving the 100, 200 bucks.
So stay tuned for more, subscribe to our channel if you wanna see future shootouts and comparisons where we're gonna put all these products side by side. Products from KO, from EBMX, from Torp, so that we can give you our best recommendations about what a product is best in certain riding situations, which one's gonna be best for you. Thanks again for watching today's Torp product focus. Stay tuned, we'll see you next time.